class, we've done a couple of experiments now using a fairly, let's be honest, simple calorimeter where we've taken a cup and had things react within the cup and we're assuming that um, no heat is lost to the cup, which is almost true but not, not quite true. But it's really not the way a professional scientist would get a value for an enthalpy change or, or an energy released by a reaction. What is actually used is a bomb calorimeter and that's what's going to be used in this experiment. We're going to use a bomb calorimeter to determine the caloric content of two different foods. The foods we're going to use are dog food and cat food. And what our goal is, say, which one has more energy than it delivers per gram when it is uh, eaten and uh, digested. So what we're going to do first is show you the bomb calorimeter parts. And then after that, we're going to assemble it um, to do our experiment. Okay. The reaction takes place in this portion of the calorimeter. And what we do is we're going to put our sample, our cat food or dog food, in this little cup. And we're going to ignite it with a, essentially a trigger wire that's going to come through here and burn. And it will react, and it will react fairly quickly. It will basically explode. We want to capture the energy, and we also want to capture the gases that are formed. So what's going to happen is this is going to go into this large container made of stainless steel that this reaction uh, holder will screw into. So that goes into there. And then we put a lid on it to hold it in place. But I'm not going to screw it all down because we need to do our sample. In order to capture the energy, the reaction vessel, where the heat will be generated, will be put into a bucket that will contain a known amount of water. And so this will go in the bucket, we'll put some water in there, and then what we will do is two things. One is we will attach these electrical leads to the bomb unit, the reaction vessel, which we'll put an electric current through, which will ignite the sample, so that's what the react that's what will start the reaction. And then we're also going to have two other things. We're going to have a stirring device that stirs the water to mix it so that the heat is uh, dissipated or, or mixed around. And we're also going to have a thermometer, a, a very nice, sensitive, expensive thermometer that'll measure the temperature change in there. And so we'll know the heat capacity of our reaction vessel. We'll know the uh, mass and specific heat capacity of the water that's in here. And from that, we'll be able to tell the amount of energy that is released during the reaction. So now we're going to go ahead and prepare our sample and get the whole thing set up and run our reaction. In order for the reaction to go to completion, the food needs to be in tiny particle sizes. And so what we do is we've taken the, the kibble from the dog food bag, and what we've done is we've crushed it up into a powder. And now we're going to take that powder and make a pellet out of it. This is called a pellet press, and the way it works is it has this kind of piston here that's going to go down and push on our, on our powder and press it into a pellet. And the powder is going to go in this little holder here, and it's going to press against this bottom piece of metal here. We're going to take this here. We don't have to weigh it yet because we're going to weigh it after it's made. What we're going to do is we're going to take this and pour it in here. This guy's got to be another way to yeah. So I'm going to pour it on a piece of paper and use the paper to kind of funnel it in there. It smells like dog food. <laughs> Pour that into there. Oh, there's a lot. Um, yeah, just a little. Lost a little, but that's okay. It's fine. We'll measure it here. Okay, I'm going to put that on here. Put it on tightly. And then we're going to push this down. Hard. Hard. Okay, now it should be a pellet. It was really stuck at the top. Yeah. I didn't. I didn't. It was to get that I caught it before it before it started releasing Is the pellet. Is true? Yeah. And lift it up. Yeah. Yeah. Put it in here and then wait it out. Okay. 
but don't do too much because I'm not sure how compact that will be. Wait, 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 we want to be careful. Yeah, but it looks good. I think it will be cool. Okay. And so class, we've made this pellet. Look at this, this is so cool. It's like a little pellet of uh, dog food. It's not like a little pellet of dog food, it is a little pellet of dog food. This is so exciting. Okay, now the next thing we have to do is we have to weigh that. All right, to weigh our pellet, we're going to come back to our Metlachlido analytical balance. We're gonna put a weigh boat on and tear the balance. Okay, and now we're gonna take our pellet and move it on to the weigh boat. I'm going to actually take the weigh boat off and move it over. And notice I'm just using my hands. Should you pick up chemicals with your hands? You shouldn't. But this, my friends, is dog food. So we're doing it. And so the pellet weighs 1.3440 grams. And so now we know the mass of our reactant. Class, as you've probably noticed on your time on Earth here, that dog food does not spontaneously combust when it's near oxygen. Because you have dog food out in the air, it's not burning. And so we need our reaction to happen quickly. And we're going to do this in two ways. One is we're going to use much more oxygen than is normally in air. So the oxygen we're going to use is 20 atmospheres, which is about 400 times more oxygen than which is about 400 times more oxygen than is uh, present in normal air. So that's one thing. The second thing is we're going to use uh, some wire that burns. It's, it's, it's like a fuse. In fact, it's called fuse wire that's going to ignite when we put an electric current through it and set the, uh, the dog food burning. And this is called fuse wire. It's sold by PAR, the makers of the bomb. And the wire itself is going to generate some heat. We have to take that into account when we make our measurement. And in fact, this is really cool. The wire comes on a cardboard holder that said, that gives you distances in centimeters. This is 10 centimeters long. It says for 10 centimeters, or what, 1,400 calories per gram for this, and it tells you how much per centimeter. Uh, it's covered, hold on, I need another one. That's so funny. Uh, it's 2.3 calories per centimeter of this wire that burns. So we're gonna weigh the wire before and afterwards to know how much it contributes. Okay, so it's time to uh, put the reactant into the uh, part of the bomb calendar that's going to ignite it. And so this assembly here allows both oxygen to go in and also allows electricity to come in. So what we've done is we attach this small uh, ignition wire, um, to which we've weighed, to the two electrical leads. And the idea is that's going to sit on top of the dog food, touching the dog food, and that will burn and ignite the dog food. So what has to happen is the reaction cup has to be below this, the wire has to be in contact with the dog food, but the wire can't hit any other metal. So we're gonna very gently lift this up, put the cup underneath it, and there it sits. And now what we're gonna do is the wire needs to not touch the cup, it needs to touch just the dog food because that's what we want the burning to happen. So we're gonna push this down on it hold it in place. So we're now going to take the sample holder and attach it to the bomb. And so we've got this rubber gasket ring here and that's going to hold this sealed at the top here. And so we're going to take this and we're going to very gently take it and we're going to add this in here. And then push down so that it seals nicely. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take this ring and tighten down on it. And hold it in place and seal it tight. That doesn't work. Ah. That really goes a long way. You think you're done, you're not. As soon as you think it's done, it's not done. It's amazing. <laughs> It's like, it's like, how can that be? Like, it feels like I couldn't, couldn't go another inch, and all of a sudden it's like, oh yeah, it's not hard anymore. It's like it's equilibrating or something. Okay, there, there, it really truly stopped there. That's pretty fun. Let me see. 
it's time to fill the bomb up with pure oxygen gas. And to do that, we're going to add oxygen to the bomb compartment and then flush it out and then do that two or three times to get all the air out of there except oxygen. And to do that, we've hooked up the oxygen tank with a regulator which controls the pressure going to the bomb, we've hooked that up to the bomb. And so we're going to use this crank here and go up to 20 atmospheres, very gently. We're going to hold this here in case it, okay, so we've got 20 atmospheres of oxygen inside the bomb now. And to just allow us to disconnect this line, we're going to actually release the pressure from the line using this one here. Okay, and now it's safe to disconnect the bomb from the gas tank. Okay, so now we're going to assemble the whole, um, the whole system. So we're going to take our bomb, which has our sample and the oxygen in it now, and that goes right in the middle here, and there's a place that kind of sits snugly there. Okay, and then what's going to happen is we're going to first connect the two leads that are the electrical leads that are going to be used for igniting the wire, the ignition wire, which will then ignite the junk food. Now to measure the amount of energy that's given off, we have to capture the energy when the bomb itself gets hot. And for that, we're gonna use water, and we've measured out exactly two liters of water. So we're gonna add that in around the bomb. And that's gonna cover up the bomb, which of course is airtight, because of course it has 20 atmospheres of oxygen in it. It's like when you're pouring things and you get past the phase where it's gurgling. It's kind of uncomfortable when it gets when it gets covered up. I'm not sure I like that feeling. You live with it. We're scientists after all. You suck it up. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the cover. And the cover's got two things. It's got a fan, kind of like a, uh, a turbine that's gonna twist the water around and it's got a thermometer. And so what we're going to do is we're going to put the thermometer on the side where there's enough room for it and the turbine propeller, if you will, on the other side. And then we're going to hook it up this gasket here to the rotor that will turn it. And my friends, we are ready to go. Make this go? So we're going to turn this on, and so we're going to turn on the, the rotor and make the, uh, okay, good. we're going to plug in the rotor. What's going no, on here? it's going, it's going. Is it going? Oh, it's going. It's going. So we're going to make the rotor, we're to, so we've turned on the rotor, and now the fan inside is going and mixing the water so that the heat is dispersed and the temperature will go. Okay. All right, so we're going to start recording, but not do our ignition yet. Okay, so it seems like the temperature is quite stable around 22.7, 22.8. We're now going to go ahead and ignite our reaction using the danger button. I'm going to push this now. And the light flashed, which meant the reaction happened. So we've removed the bomb from the, the apparatus, and we're going to look inside to see if we can see if the dog food in fact reacted. And so let's take this off here. Oh, and it has. It has. Let's get the cup out of here and take a look. So we can, so we can see in there that the dog food is gone. There's a little bit of residue from the uh, ignition. and. Because it's a combustion reaction, there should be water. So let's look inside the uh, bomb and see if there's any water as our second react, our second product. I'm not sure you can see it in the video, but there is. There's water kind of sloshing around on the bottom. Not hardly a milliliter, less than that. But there's water in there that's uh, the product of the combustion reaction. So our reaction worked. 
Okay, so the experiment is done. We've seen that the dog food inside the compartment reacted. The temperature we can see went up. We can measure that temperature change. And from that, we can calculate the uh, energy change from the release of the dog food per gram. We can't do it per mole because dog food's not a pure substance.